This is Zort Central, and I'm your host, Mike the Zorch. Now, uh, this happened today. Uh, E3 posted that there will be no more E3s. They posted this on X today, and I'm really not that surprised about this. I was expecting this to come at some point. I was maybe thinking early next year the announcement would come from the Electronic Software Association, or ESA, that's in charge of E3, that they would uh, no longer be holding the convention, but you now I wasn't. Ex I was expecting this announcement. I just wanted to, wasn't expecting it to come in December. But uh, yeah, uh, E3 is dead. It's the end of an era, and really, as I said, I'm not surprised. I was expecting this. Uh, There's a little bit of history lesson. Uh, E3 started in 1995. Before that. Uh, video games occupied some of the show floor at the Consumer Electronics Show. Some insiders made a joke that video games were put out in the same tent as, as the uh, adult entertainment stuff. And over time, video games began to occupy more and more of the show floor at CES. And so the ESA decided that um, video games was maturing enough that they needed their own convention. This was around the time you know, Sega and Nintendo had revitalized the gaming industry after the crash. Uh, Sony was beginning to enter the gaming market. Uh, Sega was getting ready to release the Saturn. I think the Saturn may have been around, may have been out at this time. PlayStation was announced at uh, E3 by Sony, and so um, they were. Primarily a trade show for the media, for magazines. You know, remember Electronic Gaming Monthly and Game Pro? There were a lot of video game magazines back in the day, and some some news um, outlets covered video games. Not many, but there were a lot of magazines that covered video games, and so they sent people to E3 to, you know see what the uh, industry was working on. There would be behind closed doors, demonstrations of games. Uh, you know, I believe Half-Life was shown to people for the first time here. Uh, Unreal just completely wowed people for the first time. They'd never seen anything like it at E3. Uh, so many so many games, so many pieces of technology uh, for video games were shown at these conventions. And you know, that's, they're, they're not going to happen anymore. And the reason why is not just any one thing. One, attending E3 is expensive. And nowadays, back then, there... The internet was in its infancy. There was no YouTube, there was no Twitter, no social media, no Twitch. Today, those things exist. We have social media all over the place. We have uh, streaming, we have YouTube, we have Twitch, we have Kick, we have Rumble, all sorts of services. And some of the game companies are actually doing their own events where they have more control over you know, how they can set things up. Whereas before there were a lot more restrictions. Now they can set things up. They can be there for a day, uh, set up a one day event instead of having to be there for like a week or so or, or, or several days. So it's way less expensive for them. And some like Nintendo can just do a digital event. And so it's not as expensive for them to uh, do stuff like this. So really it's down to economics. It's down to the ESA being slow to change because they're, they're very stuck in their ways, very stuck in the past, uh, in, their, in their thinking and in, in their business logic. Uh, you can tell that by their decisions, by their their big push for DRM, which 
which I consider a failed technology. Um, it is its failed technology. It does not stop piracy at all. So companies should stop investing in it. You know, people say, well, they have to protect their... It doesn't protect anything. It is a waste of money. Stop investing in stuff like De Nuvo, which affects performance. Stop it. It's a waste of money. I don't want to hear any argument saying, oh, they have to protect their games. It doesn't protect them. It does nothing. Anyway, that's a rant for another day. But, um... E3 didn't evolve enough for the changing times. And then the coup happened. And game companies decided to go their own way like men going their own way you know and um, doing their own thing and it's less expensive for them and they can reach their audiences much better than they could through you know through this expo because um, before they had to go through magazines they had to go through the press not so much anymore I mean look at um Look at gaming media now, the mainstream gaming media now. They're in absolute shambles. And it's all their own fault for it. You know, it's not just streamers. It's just not influencers. And, and channels like mine, or like Angry Joe, or Gaming Bold, or Game Ranked, who are here in Texas. I believe they're here in Texas. I think so. But... It's not all their. It's not all the fault of YouTube streamers, and um, it's all their own fault that they're falling apart and becoming irrelevant. And so, the whole reason why E3 exists was because of them, and they're becoming irrelevant. So really, it was again. I I saw the writing on a wall like some time ago back when you know E3 was not going to be coming because of the coof I knew you know there's a possibility that E3 might not come back at all because I've been seeing how the industry has changed how gaming journalism has changed for the good and for the worse and I was I was thinking you know this may not come back this may not come back at all. And I was right. It's not coming back. So E3 is officially dead. Well, I have been your host, Mike the Zorch. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>